Hi. Thanks for the nice introduction. So uh, I got my bachelor's degree in physics and doing a PhD in electrical engineering. Currently, I'm working on drug development for cancer. I know it's kind of odd for an electrical engineer to work on drug development. It's not very traditional. So with this talk, I'm going to tell you about my story. And hopefully, you will be convinced that why being non-traditional may be helpful in some cases. And also, I will explain what is all this got to do with this wiffle ball I am holding in my hand. When I, uh, I'm interested in cancer due to obvious reasons. Cancer is the second most common cause of mortality in most parts of the world. One of every four deaths is due to cancer. Actually, what we are doing is we are curing other reasons of that just to increase our chances to get cancer. <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, when I first started my PhD, I was so naive that I was debating with myself whether cancer is a good field to start a fresh career on. Because at those times, I was thinking cancer had already been cured. And uh, because if you look at the news, there's every day, Someone, someone, somewhere cures cancer. And in those days, I was actually believing the news. And after spending a few years in cancer research, I realized that actually this is not the case. Currently, for, uh, for treatment of cancer, we do surgery, radiotherapy, and chemotherapy. We all know the issues such as resistance, and recurrence. However, the main problem in cancer therapy is the specificity. In fact, our drugs are quite effective against cancer cells. But the problem is they are quite as effective against healthy cells as well. So when I was uh, researching for ways to improve specificity, I encountered the use of foreign enzymes. Foreign enzymes are proteins from uh, a non-human origin. And they are specialized to catalyze certain chemical reactions. But with foreign enzymes, I don't mean enzymes from a different planet. Unfortunately, we don't have that much funding. With foreign enzymes, I mean enzymes from a different organism, such as from bacteria or yeast. By using those, we can make sure that whatever the activity we want to achieve is localized only at the location we deliver those enzymes. So now I will elaborate on that. All right. Yeah, can you just? <laughs> All right. So with, by using foreign enzymes, there are two ways uh, to kill cancer cells. One of them is starving by depleting crucial nutrients feeding the tumor. But normal cells will survive because they can produce their own. But the mutations that are associated with them becoming cancerous also prevents them to produce certain amino acids they require. So if you deplete them, then you can starve them to death. Or the other way we can do is the poisoning. So we can poison them by generating drugs right at the cancer site. So I will give you an overly simplified example to explain this. So for instance, for instance, let's consider the solid tumors. And we can take the poisoning approach. And in solid tumors, there is a localized tumor. And this can be any kind of tumor. This can be pancreatic tumor, colon, lung, breast, you name it. And we can do enzyme prodrug therapy. In enzyme prodrug therapy, we first deliver our enzyme molecules to the tumor location. And there are several ways of doing it. We can, for instance, benefit from the leaky nature of the vessels feeding the uh, tumor. Because like normal organs, normal organs uh, to grow, 
they need to be fed by the blood. So they grow a vasculature around them to be fed. And similar to those organs, tumors also want to grow, and they also initiate a ves vessel formation around them. However, since they grow aggressively, the vessel formation cannot keep up with the growth. So the vessels become incomplete. So by benefiting from that, we can leak our enzymes out of the vasculature and into the tumors. And this is one way. Or we can use molecules that selectively bind to cancer cells and attach those molecules to our enzymes. Regardless, after we deliver our enzyme molecules, we introduce our prodrug. This is not the drug. This is the prodrug, which is inactive and non-toxic form of the drug. It's a modified version of the drug with a cleavable linker. So it doesn't function as, uh, it, it, it is not toxic. We administer it systemically. And this prodrug will go everywhere the blood reaches. However, it won't be toxic. It will only get activated at the tumor site by our enzymes through a very specific enzymatic reaction. Our enzymes convert the prodrug into drug form. And since they are only at the tumor site, the toxicity is localized at the location. You can do the same thing with, by using another enzyme and starve the tumor cells to death. These all sound good. But foreign enzyme therapy has failed. Because of evolution. These days, everybody is blaming evolution. And today, I'm also blaming evolution. Yes, because of evolution, because of evolution, foreign enzyme therapy has failed. So this is our enzyme. Because foreign enzymes trigger immune response, which causes them to be rapidly cleared or be neutralized. Because antibodies labeled in pink are proteins which are produced by our immune system to recognize foreign bodies. Go and just bind to them. For millions of years, our immune system has evolved to protect us from harmful germs. But with this approach, what we are doing is we are using a protein from one of those harmful germs to kill our own cells. So our immune system, in this case, tries to protect cancer from our therapy. Because according to our immune system, cancer cells are just as cool as any other healthy cell. So what's the solution? So the solution is the shark cage. So I know it, it doesn't seem like a solution to cancer, but uh, now I will elaborate on that. In a shark cage, you have a diver who is larger than the distance between the bars. So he or she cannot escape the cage, at least without a key. At the same time, our shark is also larger than the distance between the bars. So the shark can't go through the cage and eat the diver. However, small fish or other small stuff can easily go through these bars and access the diver. All right. But for cancer, of course, we need a smaller scale solution. So this is uh, what I'm talking about. Imagine a hollow shell where enzymes are encapsulated inside and are freely bouncing around, but they can't escape the shell. At the same time, antibodies can't go through the shell and access the enzyme. But this is not an ordinary shell. This is a nanoporous shell. In this shell, there are tiny pores that are smaller than the enzymes and antibodies. So unlike enzymes and antibodies, small prodrug molecules or other substrates of enzyme can easily go through this nanoporous shell, interact with the enzyme, get modified, become drug, and can leave the structure modified. OK, but how are we going to do this? So now this is the engineering part. So now I'm introducing the nanomasking method. So in the nanomasking method, we have two kinds of nanoparticles. They are made of polymer. And we call them templates and nanomasks. So 
the surface of these particles are functionalized in a way that when they are mixed in solution, they aggregate, where nanomass covers certain portions of the template. And then we do our polycondensation reaction, which occurs only on the template surface while it's blocked on the nanomasks. Later, we remove these templates and nanomasks, and then we are left with a dual porosity particle with larger holes on the surface. Through these larger holes, we load our enzyme molecules, and once the enzymes are encapsulated, we grow another layer of nanoporous material. So once sealed, enzymes can't escape. However, since this is a nanoporous material, small prodrug molecules or other substrates can easily diffuse through this shell, interact with the enzyme, and can get up modified. So when I first talk about this idea, one of my professors, who is a big name in the field, told me that, Inaj, this is one of the best ideas I have ever heard. But you know what? It will never work. So it wasn't very encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was so pissed, I thought, <laughs> I thought I could prove him wrong with a few simple experiments in a few years, uh, in a few weeks. Actually, it took me several years and 129 experiments to take this picture. These are nanoparticles made of glass. Now you get the idea why I'm holding this wiffle ball in my hand. And this doesn't seem like an inspiration for a therapy to cancer, right? But it's what it is. And actually, these nanoparticles are one millionth of this size. So I spent a few more years uh, to demonstrate that I can load them with enzymes, and I can seal them, and they're protected from the immune system, and we can have therapeutic efficacy, and we can deliver them to the tumor location we want. I have a lot of boring data, and if you're still interested, you can read my dissertation, which I haven't written yet. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to writing it in a few months. Actually, this is what my advisor thinks. <laughs> so long story short, this is a pure engineering solution to a purely medical problem. I know it is still not very electrical engineering, but at least it can qualify as engineering. So going back to where I started, we are in the 21st century. Science is not being performed in private labs in the basements of houses anymore. It requires specialized facilities, millions of dollars, and many, I mean many people. And these people cannot be like-minded because things have become complicated. We need to be able to look at from different perspectives. Some guy figures out a way to make the carrier nanoparticle. Some other figures out which kind of enzyme to put in, and other figures out some kind of a molecule to decorate the surface with, to target it to the location we want. And this goes on forever. Also, we don't have the luxury to be discouraged by a negative comment anymore. We need to keep on working what we believe, and sometimes we need to be naive enough to hang on to what we believe to keep on working. And most importantly, sometimes we need, to be, we need to think in a non-traditional way to innovate. By the way, cancer is still a very good field to start a fresh career on. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>